Hello everyone. For this video, we're going to be talking about pyrimidine synthesis. Now, this topic is very high yield because as we can see, we have a quite complicated pathway and there's a lot of different enzymes involved that have clinical correlations that can be applied to different diseases and drugs. So let's get right into this. Now, the first thing we need to know is obviously what are the pyrimidines. Now, first aid gives us the mnemonic cut the pi, so pi meaning pyrimidines and cut standing for cytidine, uridine, and thymidine. Now the next thing we want to talk about is how exactly are we going to make these pure pyrimidines. So the first thing you have to know is our first goal is to make carbamoyl phosphate. This is done using the amino acid glutamine and CO2 and ATP and also this is going to be done using the enzyme carbamyl phosphate synthetase 2. Remember that, number two, not to be confused with CPS1, which is used in the urea cycle, okay? That's very important. The next thing we have to know is that after that glutamine amino acid has been converted to carbamoyl phosphate, a second amino acid is going to be added, which is going to be aspartate. Now, aspartate is going to be added in order to form erotic acid. This is an important product, which we're going to get back to later. Next step is that we're going to form UMP using UMP synth synthase along with PRPP, which comes from ribose phosphate. Now we're going to talk more about PRPP in our video on the purine synthesis pathway, but for now we should just know UMP synthase is involved. Next of all, next of all, a phosphate group is going to be added to form UDP, and then UDP is going to have going to be deoxygenated to form deoxy-UDP using the enzyme ribonucleotide reductase. Next, DUDP is going to be converted to DUMP, and finally, DUMP is going to be converted to DTMP using N5, N10, methylene THF, and the enzyme thymidylate synthase. Also, another pathway stemming from UDP, as we can see, is of course to form the pyrimidine cytidine, which is going to be occurring on this side. Now, let's get into the meat and bones of this video, which is the clinical correlations and some of the tricks that we have to know within this pathway in order for it to work. Now, this step I want to talk more about, which is going to be from DUMP to DTMP. For this to occur, we need a molecule called N5N10-methylene-THF. It seems easy, but there's actually a lot involved in order to get this molecule and to have the proper amounts of it. The first thing is that when this molecule is used, we form what's called DHF. Now DHF comes from the vitamin B9, also known as folate. So in order to have this molecule, we need to have folate producing DHF. And in bacteria, which in bacteria where they, where they do not have dietary folate, sorry, excuse me, this is done using a molecule called PAVA and teridine. This is only in bacteria. And then from this molecule, they're going to convert into DHF. So bacteria uses PABA, where we're going to use folate. Then this DHF is later going to be converted to THF using the enzyme dihydrofolate reductase. And then this THF can later then be converted into the molecule that we need. Now, there's even more, there's even more of a pain for this molecule because this molecule, once we produce this molecule from THF, it has two options. N5 and methylene THF can go on to be a part of phi middle uh, synthase in order for it to produce DTMP, which is what we want. Or some of it is actually converted into N5 methyl THF, which we don't want. So what our body does is we use the molecule B12, also known as cobalamin, in order to in order to convert this 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 molecule, which we do not want, into THF again, in order to make the molecule that we do want again. So we're gonna so we keep trying to shunt it over here. However, this molecule wants to go this side, but we want to keep pushing it back towards this side over here. So that, therefore we're gonna be using vitamin B12. Now now uh, that's pretty much the gist of the pathway itself. Now let's sort of talk about the different drugs and diseases that occur within the pathway. Now of course we're gonna have liflunamide right here during the carbamoyl phosphate to erotic acid step. That's going to be inhibiting that stage. And what I want to spend more time is actually on these enzymes following. 
Now, aronic aciduria is very important to keep note of because as we can see, if we're deficient in UMP synthase, we're going to have an increase in this molecule, a decrease in UMP. So this is going to be seen as obviously tons of aronic or acid in the urine. Now, if you think about what else is actually involved with an increase in aronic acid, we know that ornithine transcarbamoylase deficiency also has an increase in aronic acid. But what is unique in aronic aciduria is that there is no increase in ammonia, which, whereas there is an increase in ornithine transcarbamylase deficiency. So this, that is a very important point for your boards, because if you see there is no increase in ammonia, then you know, but there is an increase in erotic acid, then you know we're talking about this guy, and there's going to be deficiency in UMP synthase. Next, what we're going to be talking about is hydroxyurea. Now, hydroxyurea is actually going to come in and uh, inhibit ribonucleotide reductase. This is also going to be used in the purine synthesis pathway as well. And uh, that, and we will also be discussing it in that pathway as well. Now, what's interesting with hydroxyurea is that sorry, is that it is actually prescribed to patients with sickle cell anemia because it increases the level of fetal hemoglobin, which carries more oxygen, of course. However, the mechanism is not quite clear yet. So as we go down the pathway, continue to go down the pathway, actually, you go over here. So CTP, so, what, so what's going to be cool about the following drugs is that they all sort of mimic uh, the actual DNA product. So let's start off with ARC. So ARC is going to mimic cytidine. So therefore, this molecule is going to be incorporated into the DNA. ARC, also known as cytosine A rabinoside, I believe. And they're going to incorporate into the molecule. And then they're actually going to be stopping the DNA production because d d DNA polymerase will see this molecule and not be able to uh, realize that it's not actually uh, cytidine as, as well. So that's actually an anti-cancer drug. The next thing we have is 5-fluorouracil. Now 5-fluorouracil is actually going to become 5-FU-DUMP, which makes sense because this is going to mimic DUMP, therefore it's going to be binding this enzyme and then halting production of DTMP. So that's another guy that's sort of copying the DNA. Next, we're going to have another guy copy, which is going to be the sulfonamides. Now, the sulfonamides, these guys actually mimic the molecule PABA, in the, which, so it's used in bacteria, of course, and therefore that's going to be causing an inhibition of dihydroteroate reductase because it's only going to be recognizing the sulfonamides but not the real PABA, therefore causing a decrease in DTMP. Next, right here, we're going to have methotrexate, which is going to be used in uh, humans, and then TMP and pyrimethane, uh, pyrimethane, which is going to be used in bacteria. So this molecule, guess what it's going to do? You got it. <laughs> it's going to be mimicking DHF. So you can see that when this is going to mimic DHF, it's going to be binding to this enzyme and therefore inhibiting it. Therefore, once we follow the pathway, it's going to cause a decrease in DTMP. Now let's talk about what's going to occur if we have vitamin deficiencies. As you we were saying, there's two vitamins involved, B9 folate and B12 cobalamin. So let's start off with folate. If we don't have folate, we can't produce this DHF. So therefore, if this DHF is not, not available, we're not going to have N5, N10, methylene THF, which is needed in order to convert DUMP to DTMP. Therefore, we're going to have a decrease in DTMP. Now let's talk about what we're going to have a deficiency in B12. So if you have a deficiency in B12, as we can see, since some of this guy gets converted into N5-methyl-THF, in order to reconvert it back to THF, we need B12. Because this molecule is useless, it can't be used. However, if B12 is not there, we're going to have all this THF stuck in this molecule that we can't use. So this is known as a folate trap. And this folate trap is important because when this occurs, we're going to have a decrease in DTMP. 
So that pretty much sums up the video on pyrimidine uh, syn synthesis. Uh, I hope you guys found that helpful. And if you have any questions, please post them in the comments below. And as always, please like, comment, and share. Thank you very much, and good luck studying.